Copilot may be the world's best productivity tool, but companies are a little hesitant to jump all the way into the deep end. They have a fear of employees relying too heavily on generative AI, a fear that they may cost the company a bunch of money in the mistake of a robot, or their employees becoming just outright lazy. Fortunately, Microsoft has a solution that is agent experience profiles. Think of agent experience profiles as security groups for your organization. Copilot in Dynamics is not an all or nothing feature. You can actually use these profiles to group different users and set their Copilot privileges. I'm gonna share a step-by-step -step guide on how to set these agent experience profiles up, but first we need to cover just a few more examples. Copilot in Microsoft Dynamics is a game changer and a lot of organizations want to capitalize on its time-saving and money-saving capabilities. The problem is some organizations may not want all of its users to have all of the Copilot capabilities. And with how Copilot's set up, you can't just turn it on for some users, you have to turn it on for the entire organization. Once you turn it on for the whole org, then you can actually remove that feature from specific user groups, or again, agent experience profiles. You can use as many profiles as you would like. Might be recommended that you set up a profile for the individual security groups, or maybe business departments, or maybe business units. As an example, in our demo, you'll see that I'm setting up an agent experience profile for our customer service representatives. Say you only wanted some users to have access to the Copilot help pane, you would limit that access through an agent experience profile. Or maybe you don't want your legal team to use the Copilot drafting emails capability because you feel like your legal team has a lot more legal expertise than Copilot does. Agent Experience Profiles has you covered. There are some other examples and capabilities, but enough talking about it, let's get into Dynamics. The first thing you need to do is navigate to your organization's customer service admin center. On screen, I'm gonna do this through the Power Apps Maker Portal, but it doesn't really matter how you get there. You wanna make sure if you're following me along, you go through and hit play app, not edit. Once there, you're gonna see this screen here and you're looking for the agent experience section in the sitemap on the left-hand side. Go ahead and click on the productivity section. Now, you won't find the agent experience profiles directly here, they're kinda hidden. You now need to navigate into the Copilot help pane section. So go ahead and click manage on the Copilot help pane. And if you have never done this for your organization, you're gonna be shown this opt-in screen here. This is a one-time thing and it is organization-wide. If you do not see see this screen, that is okay. That just means someone at your organization has already opted in. Here are a bunch of different settings under the Copilot help pane that you can set up. And for the segment example, I'm gonna go ahead and enable these two functionalities here. If you're interested in what these checkboxes are or a step-by-step -step guide on how to implement and customize the Copilot help pane for your organization, I actually have a video already on this channel. I will provide a link to that. Not right now, but actually at the end of the video, I'll call that out again and you can go to that video there. On the screen, be sure to save any changes that you make, but in the next section you can see is our glorious agent experience profiles. Let's go ahead and navigate there now. As you see on screen, there are some pre-made agent experience profiles. I would recommend looking through these and see if any of the out-of-the-box agent experience profiles meet your business need. You can configure these out-of-the-box ones further, but for today's example, we are gonna create a new profile. You select the new button in the ribbon, then the create window will display. Then you have to fill out a name and a unique name in order to create. Best practice, I would always recommend filling out a description as well. I know I am being a rule breaker right now by not doing that, but please don't tell anyone. Now once you have your profile created, you have six sections here, and we're gonna cover each one in some detail. The first section is where you're actually gonna outline the specific users that are gonna be a part of this agent profile. It does look like users can only be added to a single agent experience profile. So for example, if you are not seeing a name in this list, it is because they are already a part of an existing one. I have already gone ahead and created two customer service representatives for this organization. We have William James and Sir James Williams. Once you have added the users, they will display in this subgrid on the top of your profile form. I wish there was a way to add security groups or business units to agent experience profiles as well, because there are some pretty large organizations with thousands of employees and having to set all these up on a user by user basis 
and adding each one of those individually would be a huge effort. I don't think there's any way around this unless I'm missing something. So if I am, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Or if you have experience with larger companies utilizing agent experience profiles, let me know how you handled it down there. The next section on the form is the entity session templates. I'm not covering these in detail, but ultimately entity session templates are the experience that the agents will go through in omnichannel for customer service. Essentially, this just means you can outline the different tabs and windows that open when your agents are navigating around omnichannel. When an agent accepts an incoming conversation, then a session is started. And there is some out of the box sessions or you can create your own custom one if you'd like. That is about all you really need to know for the sake of today's conversation. But if you're interested in learning more about entity session templates, I'll be sure to add some valuable links that I find useful in the description down below. Anyways, this section is just used to set which entity session template you want this group of users to use. Next, we have the productivity pane. Now, I am actually gonna cover this one last after we breeze through the rest of these here. Now, the inbox section is used to set which views your agents have access to in the customer service workspace or the omni-channel for customer service apps. Say, for example, we did not want our agents to be able to see the closed work items view on cases then we could remove that ability here. For the sake of updating one, let's go ahead and do that. Now, an important note is that this is actually not impacting security at all. So our agents are still going to be able to see the records that would normally be in that view. They just wouldn't have that view in their dropdown of selectable views. I hope this is making sense. They would still be able to search and find this record for example. The next section, the channel providers, is gonna outline if you want this profile to see your channels and the specific third party channels you want this profile to have access to. Channels just refer to the different communication methods like text, call, email, Teams chat, social media, etc. Supporting different channels in your business is important so then that way you can reach customers in their preferred channel and ultimately providing more personalized service. Here is where you can opt profiles into utilizing these channels that are already set up in Omnichannel and Unified Routing. The last section is the Copilot AI features. Currently for customer service, there are two main capabilities and that is the Copilot help pane and Copilot summaries. As mentioned in the beginning, you must opt in the entire organization and then this section here is where you would remove those privileges from specific users. The Copilot help pane is that window that pops up on the right hand side where you can ask Copilot different questions. Questions like how to solve a particular customer issue and the Copilot is then going to dig in the knowledge sources and bring the best answer to your agent. Or if you want to utilize it to draft an email response, you could do that too. The Copilot summaries feature allows you to summarize case records and conversations. The conversation summaries, in my opinion, are particularly useful because you can use it to capture long email threads or long text conversations for yourself or others that need to get caught up to speed. You can see here that in order to use the Copilot help pane, you actually need to have the productivity pane already enabled, which brings us back up to that section that I skipped earlier. Once you enable the productivity pane, you have a host of different options to also enable within the productivity pane, one of which being this Copilot switch here. If you want to utilize the Copilot help pane, you need to switch that. In this situation, we'd probably want to enable agent scripts and knowledge searches as well. But once you have all of your updates done, again, make sure you save and close. And now you can see in the bottom section that the Copilot help pane is now auto enabled for this agent experience profile. I didn't even begin to scratch the surface of all of the capabilities of Copilot in D365 customer service and D365 as a whole. In order to learn more, you're gonna to to check out this video here as it covers everything you need to know about Copilot in customer service. And as promised, this is the video on how you can set up the Copilot help pane, and it's a step-by-step -step guide on how to do that. Thank you guys for sticking to the end of the video. My name is Griffin Lickfeld, the host of Citizen Developer, and I'm excited to connect with you guys in the next one.